It was finally time to leave. Our wintering was over. Nice. Our contract was finished with the marina and um, it was time to go. Share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing ho, hey, long for the ride. Ho, hey, I'll stay by your side. Ho, hey, you'll always be alright by me. Yes, you are. We had mixed feelings when we left. It was kind of sad to say goodbye to all the friends that we'd met, but we're also obviously really excited about um, carrying on our voyage and setting sail again. We felt like even though we'd been working non-stop over winter, there were still loads of things we had to do before we left that dock. Uh, right, so we're just refueling. Um, so the weather's quite windy today, but tomorrow it's supposed to die off, so we're waiting an extra day. So we had a massive list of shopping. We need to um, get enough stuff to last us quite a few weeks because you can't get it in a lot of the islands. This is three weeks of food. Probably about half of what we've got to get. We haven't got all the fresh stuff yet. Because, uh... We've got three jars of this. Somebody likes chilli and um, pickles. We did our last minute engine checks and we also did a rig check. So a double bowling, so I've just doubled up the line. Wait, uh... Right, ease a bit, Clive. Clive's got a massive hangover. <laughs> yeah, go for it then. Okay. and learning how to do that properly. Have a look down! Ah! <laughs> well done, Rowan. Yeah, I am so good at Is it scary up there? It's really high, but it's fun. Oh, God. <laughs> the mast is wobbling. Okay, up. Go, go, go! Up or down? Down. Okay. Down? I'm almost done. That's freaky. <laughs> The great thing about going up your mast is that you get a really good view. So we could see for miles around and we could see all the places that we had visited this winter in the island of Lake Garden. Okay, so it's really beautiful here where the monastery is and there's loads of different animals here. There's even reindeer. around the back that are covered in snow and um, you can see all the wetlands down there where you see flamingos and pelicans, herons. It's a really beautiful spot here. We've gone a different route 
right to the end and it is one of the most beautiful walks so far. We were sad to find this turtle here. Um, and the turtle looks like it, it's been washed up. Maybe in the water it was injured by a propeller on the boat because there's two kind of cuts in it that have gone right through its really thick shell. going through the huge Rio bridge where you are supposed to call the authorities and get permission to pass through and they tell you where you're going to pass through subject to the um, air draft on your boat. Okay so we've got to go through this bridge um, but just as I was speaking to them the main VHF stopped working and then what I can see the wires are loose. So we tried our handhelds and the batteries on our handheld are not charging properly either, so couldn't find a phone number. We, we lost radio contact with the bridge, but we did hear that these two ships are going through the central channel because it's supposed to pass over to starboard side. So we're just going to do that slowly and hope that the mast is not too high. We contacted some friends that have gone through. Peter and Anne told us that you ought to go through between two particular pylons. So we headed for that. But then as we got closer to realise our boat is a little bit bigger and maybe we wouldn't fit, that we might basically just wipe out the roof of our home. 
So I kind of weighed it up and thought, I'm just going to go through the middle where all the big ships go through. I think we're going to make it. It says on the thing, 45 metre clearance. I can't really tell. I was kind of a little bit concerned that um, we might get into trouble doing that. Yeah, one thing we keep saying to ourselves is ask forgiveness and not permission, which seems to work quite a lot for us. This time of year, the weather's still quite unpredictable, so um, you can't plan too far ahead. It's an island called Trizonia, and it's just kind of in, in the Gulf of Patras, so we're going to go around the corner and get some shelter. Trizonia safely and um, it's quite calm and it's peaceful it's sleepy and really pretty and then a, quite a strong catabatic wind comes down and we were getting blown onto this old dock this marina is it's kind of a half built and now abandoned there's no one there um, managing it or looking after it and it wasn't really a good dock to be blown onto What, you mean pop? Uh, wow, are you strong? Yeah. <laughs> What's Daddy doing? He's making a fender board, so uh, the fender board will take all the rubbish. This fender board, is that going to help? Okay. It looked like um, a lot of people had stopped here and never carried on because we went exploring around the marina and we saw all sorts of boats and a lot of them looked like they'd been abandoned completely but then every now and then we saw some signs of life it was kind of almost like a scene from a Mad Max movie or maybe it was just a place where lots of cruising dreams have died so on the catamaran versus monohull debate if you do go for a cat, I wouldn't suggest you go for one made out of plywood. How much is it? Is it for sale? So this is Trizonia. There's a whole mixture of boats here. We've got um, a little boat over here, which belongs to Paco. He's back in a couple of weeks. And there's the circus boat, which is just here. Well loved, this boat. I think that'll be Roman's little boat. And there's a guy over there that's come all the way from South Africa and um, he's got an amazing steel boat. It's about 60 tons. And then there's a whole range of boats in there. There's a, little, there's a lovely steel boat. And a, which and I reckon, a sunken boat. And a sunken there. boat as well. There's a sunken boat in the middle of the channel there. And there. And there's a sunken boat over there. In fact, there's another one over there and there's a, one that's going to sink if someone doesn't come and rescue it. And there's also a boat with a goose living aboard. What else is there? What else? There's a boat called Haddock. Called yeah, there's our boat called Haddock, which is over there. We need, for example, something for our microwave. And I was wondering if there was anything here that we could reuse. But, uh... Do you have a washing machine filter? Yeah. This might be handy. This is the sort of thing you do when you're at sea. You know, you can't get these things, especially in Greece. So, you know, you can find these things sometimes, maybe. We have an old boat. Beautiful boat, she is, but quite old. So, as expected, things go wrong. We thought we sorted a lot of problems out over winter, but as soon as we got going and we're using it regularly, then these problems all come up. That's for soaking up the salt water. What's happened with you? Um, a leak on the generator. It's a uh, crack in the salt water pump, I think. It's a car on the generator. So I'm trying to run the engine to charge the batteries. So the most important 
thing about having a generator is that you can charge your batteries up. The second thing is that when you run out of water, you can make water with our water maker. And there's also a load of other things that you can't do, like run your washing machine, you can't heat your water, use any sort of tools. Those things we can kind of do without, but you can't do without your batteries being charged up and you can't do without water. So we've got the coolant system on the generator that's been spraying water everywhere, salt water, and the gasket is perished but it just so happens the previous owner has got a spare gasket here so we might be in luck It was leaking water, wasn't it? Was it? That, yeah, it was, it was spraying water all over the engine bay from the coolant system. And uh, that was the problem. It was a gasket. Number 1300959. I suspected that was the case. The previous owner doesn't carry many spares on board, but it just so happened he had that exact spare. That is lucky. So, moral of this story. Always carry a 1300959 round with you. Okay. So, after working for a few days, the next thing to go was um, the solenoid overheating. It's smelling, it's smoking. I mean, we were a bit worried that we we're actually gonna have a fire on the boat. So we had to turn the generator off and that um, we couldn't sort out. So it's a bit of a drag. Um, we thought it would have been sorted over winter. So we kind of felt like we we're back to square one again, really. In an ideal world, we would replace our generator, but that is not within our budget right now. So um, we have to make do. What have you written so far, Lucy? Yeah, that says cool. We're leaving Trisonia and now we're heading to Itia, which is about 20 miles. So that will take us about four hours. It's more east along the, Pat the Gulf of Patras. After Trisonia, we just headed around the coast a bit to Itia because that's the best place to go and see the famous temple at Delphi. When we got to Delphi, we were really um, a bit taken aback with all the people. It was it was quite a culture shock because we'd been visiting ruins where there was no one around. There was it was just us exploring them, and and you come to a place like this, a honeypot tourist site, and you just see masses of people. They've come from all over the world. Our boat is down there in Itia, so we've come up to the Temple of Delphi for a day. Right, so this is the Archaeological Museum at Delphi. supposed to be the center of the earth whereas you sent out two eagles in different directions and they came back and they met at this point just behind there there <laughs> the temple of Athenians temple of Apollo the god of music harmony light and poetry so this is where the oracle was supposed to operate and where the Pythia would inhale the vapors and go into delirium <laughs> okay, this is the main bus stop for UNESCO Heritage Site in Delphi. It's half an hour late. What do you think of the bus stop? Yeah. Uh, well, it's mostly a vending machine. It's a vending machine, yes. <laughs> well said. So I went into the restaurant, which is the bus station, and um, they said that it was coming at um, 8 o'clock. And I said, no, you told me half past five. I said, yeah, maybe half past five, maybe late. So if it doesn't come, then I'm going to try and hitch lift with the family. Do you want a drink? 
bus finally came, so we're on it and we're heading back to Itia. Our final stop in the Gulf of Patras before we go for the canal is Kiato. So this is Kiato, which is our last stop before the Corinthian Canal. It's kind of it's got two sections, so it's kind of got this small harbour here, which our draft is too much to get in. So we put our boat out on, on the outer arm where the industrial ships are. We found space there. And we decide to wait till uh, Monday to try and get cheaper rate through the canal. We decide to get the paddleboard out, the weather improved, we had the swing out, and we had a lot of fun. Woody even opened up our barbecue. You've got to buy the mount for it separately, and that was like 65 euros or something. Really expensive. First barbie of the season. The journey to get from east to the west side of the Gulf of Patras and the Corinth Canal was altogether about 10 days. So that's the end of this vlog. On the next vlog, we head through the canal. We'll tell you all about that and how we head into the Aegean Sea. So look forward to lots more adventures. Bye for now. Should we go? I don't know. No, Mum, there's a car. Right, which way? Okay. A bit, I think they both stop. Right. Oh, Janet, let me No, there's one on the other side. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Wait, the other side. Have not stopped. Okay, you're right. We can't go. Oh, because the other one. <laughs> this is the navel, which is considered the centre of the earth. So that is where the two eagles that Zeus sent out. Just stop them walking. At this point, where this kind of egg shape is. So we're just arriving in a tier. Um, we've got a big ship. If I turn around, you can see it behind me. Which I'm just making sure that we are not going to have a collision with. Where has it gone? <laughs> Over there. And also discovering other things like dolphins in the wild, something you never ever see um, on land. <laughs> Stupid net, right. <laughs> this is the island of Lefkada. I have to shout above the chickens. And around the outside, we've got mountains covered in snow, <laughs> a bridge and a walkway. <laughs> you and me, we're family. No matter how far away we've grown to be, we travel long So thanks for, again for watching our blogs. If you like them, please do share, comment, we will reply to you. Also subscribe on YouTube, you just have to open up a Gmail account. And um, yeah, make sure everybody else sees them as well. Thanks, bye. And if you want to do it, 